brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter with you on your Monday morning. It is minus 35 outside. The computer doesn't even tell us the temperature anymore. It's given up completely. It could be plus six out there. The computer's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with your weather. I'm done with your colds. But it's supposed to be like minus six on Thursday? What, what's this all about? Yeah, minus seven right now, it says. Uh Oh, right now or on Thursday? Right now. Looking ahead. Forecast. I was going to say, minus seven is not accurate. It's right definitely mi- not minus seven right it's now. It's frigid no. out there, for yeah. people's sake. It's minus 35. Minus 35. 49 Am- with the magical wind chill. Ambient temperature of minus 35. Mm. It's cold. It's enough to freeze your eyelashes on the on the walk from the car to the door. I felt like some kind of frozen swamp hag walking uh, in here this morning right. after this walk to work. Uh, were you giving out swords to, to, to people? Huh? No? Never mind. This is how King Arthur became king. Um, ah. By grabbing a sword from a frozen what? swamp hag. What? What? <laughs> king Arthur. You got the, the lady of oh. the lake. Give him the sword. Frozen <laughs> swamp hag. Uh, she does not like to be referred to. <laughs> I, I, she doesn't. But, you know, history is told by the winners. And King Arthur was like, oh, she's beautiful. What a, what a gorgeous woman giving me the sword out of a lake when really she's like, I have a lady sword, I'm frozen. It's, uh, I don't know where we're going with that. I actually drove by, by your place as I do every morning lecture and I saw you getting ready. Did you? And I was going to stop and then I was like, I don't know how long it's going to take He's to get down ready. here. He's not ready. He's tossing his jacket. Yeah, he can't count on me. I love that I can see right into your condo as I drive to work. It's creepy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Well, the lights you're not usually on. <laughs> this is how we see things. This <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well good start to the day anyway mornings at the cabin the podcast ollie has something to talk about and he won't let us in on it well i <laughs> scott's already in on it is he yeah i guess well you guys spend a lot more time together you guys spend a lot more time together here than i do because i got a skedaddle after the show it's nothing inside okay no, no. i just guessed it oh guessed that's right oh yeah, i guess it, it up it's uh it's it goes back several weeks to a, an issue that arose on the show mm. <laughs> Uh, you raised this issue. I did. Several times. I did. What in forceful terms. Oh, okay. Um, and once you finally secured a personal invite to Bridget's party. Oh, I knew you were, I knew this was going to come up. I knew this was going to come up. Were you there this weekend? Of course. Okay. Because she invited us. Yeah, of course. Well, Scott wasn't there either. Lecter didn't go. I wasn't there. Yeah. No. No, but I Lecter know. Lecter barely mentioned it on the air. Lecter never once complained. I, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to nip this in the bud right now. Uh-oh. I'm going to nip it in the yes, bud. Yes, you sent her messages. We know. We read the messages. Oh, you read the messages. <laughs> yeah. Really nice messages. No, that, those, 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 those really compensate for not turning up to someone's birthday party. They actually do because I was exhausted. What did you I, say? I, I said, hey, like, what I say? what I say? Well, no, Ollie was going to cut me off and say, no, those messages don't mean anything. Um, <laughs> well, they I, don't, but let's hear them. They do mean something. Um, no, I didn't make it because, again, I was... Uh, absolutely exhausted and i had to Fair see enough. a friend who was in town for only two nights ah uh, um she's got she's getting married oh and uh, she's in town from anuvik hey <laughs> that's how it begins okay good start hey first off i'm really glad you walked into our office with treats that first day i think you were pretty damn cool when you left the other day we all said in a classic canadian comment what a beauty Yes, she is. We did. This, we literally what a beauty. did say This that. is one yeah. of those classic messages that is a sandwich. The good I won't, news. I won't make it up tonight. The bad news in the middle. I'm going to bed within the hour. There's the I did. I was, I was in bed by <laughs> nine. I am old, but I wanted to say happy birthday. I hope you have a great night. Well, that, that's nice. That's yes. nice. I didn't even say that. Like, nice I didn't thing, even send a message. No. Nice thing. Bad thing. Nice thing. What's classic the, Where's the bad technique. thing? Where's the bad thing? The bad thing is I'm not going to your party. That's not a bad thing. Well, for, for most people, they're like, good. It appeared, to be a, it appeared to be a bad thing when you didn't have an invite to it. Well, no, but here's here's the thing. It's almost as if plans can change over mm. the course of a couple of weeks. Whereas mm. it, whereas two weeks ago, I would have been like, I'm absolutely there. Hell, even on Friday, I was like, I'm going to go to Bridges tomorrow. By the end of the day, Saturday, I, and then I and then I went up for dinner with my friend. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home, go to sleep. It was, no my denim, want. it was the no denim rule, wasn't but I, it? Uh, p- partially. Mm. I, I told you, I don't like parties with rules. I know. You know what? Come I on over to my party, celebrate my birthday. Uh, don't wear any, you know, black. Like, oh, God, I made cares? such an effort for you for that party. I had my best bow tie you on. You did not. My God. Did. What did you wear? Yeah. I had, honestly, I had a bow tie. I had yeah. a full on. Oh, like, so you didn't, go with the, you didn't go with the theme either? Yeah, I did. It's a yacht party. Therefore, I dressed oh, for a yacht. Oh, a yacht party. Did That's you go right. leisure suit? Leisure suit, Larry? 
Yeah, I had a full yeah. like uh, the jacket. I had a sp- one of my sparkly jackets on. I had the bow tie. Mm-hmm. Had the, yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. Nice. And how was it? It was really good. Nice. Yeah? Nice. nice. Awesome. I did not quite make it out as far as the range. Okay. But, uh, but oh. a lot of people did. No, really and fair. no, it was a it was a very good evening. Everybody made a, a big odd effort. Actually, a lot of people were were on point with that dress code. They did yeah. a very good job. Yeah, and yeah, no, nope, it was a great night. Most people <laughs> step up to the challenge when there's a dress code. Like yeah. nobody's even some I, people are I, really happy about it. Others are like, oh, I guess I'll play along. And yeah. I and I deeply dislike dress code. I yeah. do not like dressing up for stuff. No. But I I gave it a bit of effort, and you know what? It was rewarded. So it was a good night. Oh, good night. Well, happy birthday, Bridget! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> now indeed. that I finally said it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also I'm also averse to going to parties where I know there's like this is a person that's been in town for two months and has more friends than I do. Uh, yeah, it's also a bit you wait, isn't it? You show up, you're like, where? Who? How do yeah, you know all no, these there people? Were, yeah. There were four of us there. Oh. <laughs> four people. <laughs> yeah, she was really sad. Get the joke. She was really sad. More people didn't turn up. Oh, stop it! Stop doing this right now. Sorry, there were twenty people there. Okay, Carry I was on. gonna say, gonna say, there's not, there's, I don't. I it was don't, a well-attended party. I do not have twenty friends just, in my life. I just wanted to say at all, like including other cities and countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I'm she happy with twenty? That was an okay number for. She was. She was. She, yeah. was, happy. she, she was would have. Fine. She would have preferred twenty-one. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Ugh. Twenty-two would have been too many. So. Yeah, twenty-two would have been too many. So <laughs> if you had shown up first, then I would have ruined it. So there you go. Happy birthday to Bridget Rusk. That was on Saturday. I think that was. It was at the day of. Was there a party on the no. day? I didn't think so. No, uh, it's this week. This oh, it's this week. So you still got time to early make it party. Up, I, think. I think it was an early party. Oh, so it doesn't even count. Ugh. Okay, I'm fine. The mornings at the cabin podcast. Hey, it was early. What do you want from us? Mornings at the cabin, little Bob Marley to I don't know relax you this morning. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious. It's Monday, but now you uh, maybe you feel a little you know relaxed and you know the smell of cinnamon and cardamom fills the air and. No? Is that what Bob Marley does to you? <laughs> Probably. I don't oh, okay. know. It smells like patchouli in here now. I do love it, though. <laughs> I do love it. Um, you know that apparently dogs uh, love reggae the most? Like stuff like that. Like calm reggae. Apparently that's the music they love most. Is that a fact? Uh, well, I don't know if it's a fact. It's a study oh. that I'm quoting the headline of on an article on Facebook. So <laughs> That just came up? No, it didn't just come up. I've oh, seen it before. See. I've seen it before gotcha, that, gotcha. like, you know... You know, it's, you know, scientists determined that uh, the favorite music of dogs is... is it's reggae. Uh, it's reggae. Because it's relaxing. I, yeah. It's relaxing. Right. I think, I mean, I think... Uh, I mean, it, what's not to like about reggae? Yeah, that's right. Really? It's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Dogs get it. Dogs get it. Um, so that's what I've been listening to in my car uh, while Betty's been in the car. Because we're going back and forth to the vet. Yeah. Um, Do you ever so, make up dog lyrics? Pick up dog the, lyrics? Make up dog lyrics? Oh, yeah. yeah. I have, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't have any off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, fair. Me neither. <laughs> but every uh, yeah, absolutely. Puppy when I'm cleaning the house, soldier. Yeah, when I'm cleaning the house and I'm listening to music, I'll sing to my dog. Yeah, yeah, and she'll just look at me like I'm an idiot. How is Betty doing? Let's get a um, update here. Okay, so took her to the vet uh, last last week. She uh, so she was on um, she was limping a little bit at the beginning of December. So I took her in to see the vet. Yeah, and uh, he said, okay, well, let's put her on rest. It could be this. Like, right, it could be because a very common injury around here, very common that I've fi- come to find out, is torn ligaments. Yeah, uh, a lot of uneven ground, a lot of running, yep. you know, stuff like that, a lot of off leash stuff. Yeah, um, so torn ligaments and very slipping, you and know, slipping. it could happen anytime slipping, on the ice, absolutely. right? Yeah, um, so torn ligaments, very common injury, um, in dogs in general, but it seems to be up here as well, right? Uh, especially, um, so we put her on rest for a couple of months, um, and even well, Bridget Russ, who we were just talking about, took care of our house for a couple of weeks while we were uh, away for Christmas. And I right. like, gave her very pretty strict instructions, like, listen, you can't, you know, you can take her for a short walk around the block yeah, and like, you know, be out with her in the yard so she doesn't run around the uneven ground mm. um, just so she can rest. And her payment was that you'd show up at her party a couple months later. That's right. And it was yeah. like, listen, you do this, I'll show up at your party. And then I just completely, <laughs> <laughs> completely ignored that. Um, oh, I should give a shout out to JDQ as well because it was her birthday and I didn't go to that one either. Yeah, yeah happy JDQ, birthday, JDQ. happy thirtieth birthday, JDQ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a charmer this you is, are! This is, yeah, well, this is why I don't have any people coming to my parties. <laughs> I don't go to there. Um, so we put her on rest, and you're also never here. But anyway. that's also that's also true. Um, put her on rest for a couple of months. So in the last couple of weeks, kind of you know let her let her out a little bit more. Yeah, took her for a little bit more walks. Didn't let her off leash yet, just because she'll like she's. A two-year-old dog should yeah. run like hell. Right. Um, so let her out last week. 
um, and she tore ass around the around the yard a little bit. Yeah, came back lame, like uh, totally lame. Will not put weight on her on her leg. And, yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. So like, just, just to start off, like I mean, obviously I'm concerned about my dog, but then I'm like concerned that like we failed our dog. You know what mm. I mean? Like we failed her. We didn't do what we were supposed to do. Yeah. Um. So took her back in uh to the vet, and he was just like, oh yeah, let's get some like. Took one look at her. Didn't even didn't charge me for the consultation the first time, right? The, the first visit because he was like, "Oh yeah, no, no, let's get her in for X-rays Thursday morning. Come in for we'll X-rays." <laughs> it's like she'll be back. She'll be back. It, it's fine. so I'm not gonna charge you for this one, but you know, uh, obviously charge for the X-rays and that's fine. Yeah. Um. So we took her in for X-rays. Um. X-rays were kind of inconclusive, but like he's like, "This is this is all pretty consistent with this." I'm gonna give you a referral to uh, the vet down in Edmonton. Oh, okay. And to take her down for surgery. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm I yeah. So we're gonna have to take her down for surgery. She's gonna need surgery regardless. It looks like yeah. uh, she's still pretty like she's putting some weight on it now, but she's still limping around a lot. Yeah. Um. So Aww. it sounds like she's got a ruptured CCL, which is a very common injury in young dogs. Um. And so I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. It's part of part of owning a dog. You're gonna have to get it get it fixed at some point. Yeah. Um. So uh, we'll have to make an appointment here this week. Um, to get her, uh, to take her down and get the surgery done. I mean, it's going to be another three or four months of recovery. Yeah. Which is awful. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, so it's a little, it's not, it's not scary. It's just, it's, you know, obviously the money is, it's tough. The it's, money's scary. It's right. I mean, yeah. all told after everything, like flying down and all this other stuff, it's going to be like six grand, Oof. you know, six or seven grand. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that hurts. Yeah. You know, that hurts, especially when you're trying to, you know, save money for a house and whatnot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the, at times like this, I wish I had no heart. I'd just be like, I put her down. I couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't possibly do it. Well, ever. And the thing is, it, it, it's, it, it's, you, you can't not because she's, she's such a young dog, yeah, right? Exactly. Like she right. has, yes, yeah, so, so, so many years ahead of her, like exactly. good, you know, healthy, running around at light speed years ahead of her. If she, you know, if she was like, 10, 11, 12, you can make the argument that like, okay, well, maybe we just, we just kind of like let it heal. Cause it's not going to yeah. heal. That's exactly right. Um, a hundred percent properly on no. its own, but it will like heal. yeah, enough that she could get around. And you know, if she's not a dog, that's exactly, you know, up for running around every day, which, which is not the case, not the case. Cause that, that girl will run. Yeah. Hell bent for leather. Um, yeah. So, so that's tough. It is tough. And mm. so what I've heard is that there are, there are a few ways to do the surgery. There's the older way and there's the newer way. The newer way will give her you know, 90% plus mobility. Right. The old way is just lop it off. Oh, the old way is just lop off that leg, you know, put her in a cart. Yeah. No, <laughs> no the old way is just, it's just a different way of doing it, and it gives them like 60 to 70% mobility. This is what I've right. heard. So what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking about this because I'm hoping someone will listen and be like, well, that seems weird or something. And I'm oh, just, I do dog surgery in my I, basement. You know, Come I, on, bring her yeah, like, on in. We'll put some fishing line in there. It'll be fine. Um, uh, give me a case of beer and we'll call it. Exactly. And I mean, it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a matter of not trusting the vet, obviously. It's, right. it's like I, this is all very new territory for me. Yeah, I've had a dog before, but we've never had to deal with a, a major surgery. Yeah, even though it's a common one, um, so I'm just kind of making sure we, you know, explore all our options. Yeah. Um. So like, so if it's a choice between that and that, between ninety plus percent and sixty to seventy percent mobility, I got to take the ninety ninety percent plus. Yeah. Because she's two. Yep. And she wants to run, and she'll yeah. want to run. It's going to be you know four or five. She's months. born to run. She's born to run, baby. Um. Ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, that's enough. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so she's and it's going to be four or five months of recovery yeah right and then you know we want to be able to want to be able to have her run and go out and and you know go on hikes and things like this yeah the big one so yeah so i mean i'm gonna choose the 90 percent plus yeah because right? for a two-year-old dog going 60 70 percent just doesn't make a lot of sense like you said if no. she was older if she was like eight or nine or ten or something like that yeah. be like oh let's go 70 percent yeah she'll be okay you could justify cause yeah she's gonna be slowing down soon exactly anyway. but she's a pup and uh, so I want to, you know, we want to do what's best for her, and it's, yeah. you know, of course it's gonna it's gonna hurt a little bit financially, but uh, you know, we're we're fortunate enough yeah. to be able to like look at that and go, okay, we can we can do that. I don't know if we can do another one yeah. <laughs> like right away because the most common thing of everyone I've talked to, like vet techs and other vets, are just like the most common thing is that she's gonna blow the other one. Yeah, 
So like you gotta be incredibly strict on rest, like incredibly strict. Yeah. Like take like I take her in the last since last week have taken her out into the backyard to to eliminate as uh, as veterans say, uh, vet- <laughs> veterans veterinarians <laughs> say to eliminate waste. Um, so she pees and poops, but I have her on the leash. Yeah, and she wants to bolt. She still wants to. Yeah. Like I open the door and she'll be like. Bleh! And she'll pull. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, yank, kind of yank her back a little bit. So I've got her on a very short lease, and she's walking right beside me very slowly. Yeah. And that's going to be like another six months, four or five months of that. Yeah. Oh. So it's it's tough. Um. So we'll have to get we'll have to get that done at some point this week. Poor uh, Betty. Or early next week. So fly down to Edmonton, do the whole thing. And I didn't want to fly with her because I thought it would just freak her out too much. And then I, I asked for some advice from. From uh, from uh, some people at the SPCA, obviously we work with them a lot, and they yeah. send dogs down all the time. Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, should I sedate her for mm. this trip? And they're like, no, if she's okay, if she's good with a crate, which she is, because she's in a crate every day. Yeah, she's in a kennel every day. Yeah. Um, then she'll be okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's that like if she wasn't used to a crate, she'd just like try to chew her way out and probably. Freak yeah. Out. She's gonna be she's gonna be scared anyway, but like, you know, I think she'll be okay. Did they give you any suggestions as far as like vets in Edmonton goes? Because oh yeah, no, I got referred to ones. Guardian Veterinary down down south. Okay, and uh, well, I talked good. I talked to my uh, to Phoenix's brother's uh, partner who is yeah. a vet tech. Oh, and she said, okay, these are the two. The, she's like, where'd they send you? And we said Guardian, and they said, oh, okay, those are the two. There's two that we suggest. That one and another one. So okay, they're good. Well, that's they're good. good. Yeah, yeah at so least they're good. You got, I mean, uh, something working out for you that way. Because I was going to say that's kind of the other scary thing is you don't you don't you know we personally know. The two vets in yeah, town exactly. here, and uh, and you get a, a good sense of uh, you, you know what, just like there's a trust built, right? Of like same as us with our doctors, yeah. right? And, uh, and and you don't you don't have that necessarily if you're going down to Edmonton, you're meeting someone for the first time, and, yeah. You know, you don't know if they you assume they have your dog's best interest at stake, of course. But at the same time, there hasn't been that trust built, so it's a bit scarier. It can be, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, you know, um. So I think so. What uh, my my question before we leave is that like is there someone who's doing it the 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 new way that could you know be in town that would be great save us save us a little bit of money i don't think the the, i don't think the surgery is going to cost any any less but it saves me a trip to Edmonton. yeah right which is like uh, all told probably going to be about a thousand bucks right right getting down there i'll be able to stay with with phoenix's brother and his partner that's Mm -hmm. great uh but i'll have to rent a car and all this other stuff. And you've got to go see an Oilers game. i got to go see an Oilers game while I'm there. i got to do some shopping yeah. for goodness sake. i got to go, go out with friends yeah. for, God, for goodness sake. You can't go down to Edmonton without that's, seeing all your buddies. That's right. Um, so, yeah. So, that's kind of... So, if we could avoid all that. That's where, that's where we're at with <laughs> Betty. Um, yeah. So, that's that's kind of what's going on. Aww. Yeah. So Poor Betty. She, poor little Betty. She's... Um, She's in good spirits, yeah. but she's you know she's limping around a lot, so she'll come like lay down and sit next to us and give us that puppy dog look, and we're yeah. okay, okay. We're giving her lots of love and all that good stuff and cuddles and whatnot, but yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. Well, you'll have to set up a payment plan for with her to uh, pay you back in kisses over you know a portion of five years. Or oh so. yeah, yeah, she's way above yeah. on that. Oh. But, okay, well that's good. Yeah, that's good. She's not going to go too far in in debt here. Yeah, that's right, guys. That's right. <laughs> So, but here one more thing before we before we get to the news though. So I talked to the I talked to the the person at Guardian, and I was like, so how much is the surgery? And she's like, it's about forty two hundred dollars. I was like, okay, I knew I figured that was coming. Um, if we t- if if we were doing two, it'd be six grand. I was like, oh, so should I just snap the other one? Then? What a deal! Because like the biggest the biggest risk is that she just blows the other one while she's recovering from this one. But if I do the one. And then she blows the other one, and then I do the second one. It's yeah. going to be another four to two hundred bucks. Ask her if it works for people. Maybe so, you could just blow your CCL, just, and then uh, yeah, you know, yeah. you and Betty beside each other, and <laughs> just get it done all at once. Yeah. They gave me a dog's ligament, <laughs> um, so I was just I was kind of like, oh, so I should just snap the other one. Then <laughs> we'll just get both these done right away. But then she's like in a cart. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's a long lamp. You know, yeah. she's in her little cone and stuff. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna have a cone. Yeah. Oh God. She's gonna be all shaved. She's, yeah. gonna look, she's gonna look like we did experiments on her. Yep. The mornings at the cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio audience. You got it. You got it. Mornings at the cabin. A little devil music for you, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Literally used as an example of what was putting the devil in kids back in the sixties. Uh I concur. 
the devil's inside me after that. I mean, that's what Wooly Bully means, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's got to be some kind of witchcraft or right? devil music. Wooly that, Bully! That kind of a song gets bully. popular. Bully. The guy couldn't even sing. Bully! Wooly Bully! Ah! <laughs> I don't know. He sounded pretty good. I always loved that song. Sam I mean, that's the thing. We the all fans. love the song. Yeah. It's not a good song. Why not? But we all love it. How do you know it's not a good song? Because just listen to it again. Okay. Really break it down <laughs> in technical terms. Let's listen to it right Okay, now. let's listen to Wooly Bully <laughs> once again. In technical terms, it's a, it's, a, it's a blues riff turned into a rock song. Are you going to play it? No. Oh, I thought we were going to break oh, it down God, here. No. Have no, a we, we deep, dive to, deep dive on Sam the Chef <laughs> It's about uh, time. Yeah. It's I mean, long past time, Absolutely. Really. We need a behind the music for Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. <laughs> and it'll just be an interview with like a couple of them who are still alive. Like, that was our only song. <laughs> pretty, yeah. After that, it just kind of went downhill. You well, know? <laughs> <laughs> he joined the Monkees. I joined the Ruddles. Yeah. And it was, that was it. There was the re-recorded version of Wooly Bully, of yeah. course, uh, in, the, in the early 80s. Yeah. And it was just a, just a commercial failure. It was by Wang Chung. That's why. <laughs> It, unless you're singing it in that like over, like over over like crazy like accent that he's singing in, then it's just, uh, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, this uh, actually reminds me. So last night, um, Nicole and I were having dinner with her parents, who just got back into town. Mm -hmm. They're in Mexico for a few weeks, Very having nice. a nice little uh, escape from the winter here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, we were talking about uh, about our wedding plans as they're as they're progressing, and so mm -hmm. they were asking us about. Uh, some of the music we're planning on playing. Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Sam Let's will, get them back together. Sam will be there. Let's get them back together. Let well, me tell you. I think Sam's the only one that's still alive. Bring I mean, all maybe your, the Sham. The Sham might be alive. Bring all your wooly and your bully. <laughs> and all the Pharaohs. <laughs> uh, so they were asking if we were planning on playing some, you know, classic wedding song. You're not going to hire a band? I think we will. Yeah. I mean, we'll still do DJ stuff. Because, I yeah. mean, you know, even if you hire a band, they want it. Take a break. At I'd like some to point, learn right? something on guitar and play it at your wedding. Would you? I would do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you probably know a couple little chords. <laughs> I know a couple of together. tunes, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. know you can sing. C, D, and G. That's all you need, really. That's right. That's right. Pretty much. Nicole is like listening to this right now going, there's not a chance in hell that's happening. No chance in hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what are you thinking about music? Well, they were asking if, uh, and so I, so I, I kind of wondered. I, I said, "Well, what, what do you, what do you think of his classic wedding songs?" Mm -hmm. And uh, and Patty said, "Well, the YMCA. Oh God, you got to play the YMCA, Patty. No, <laughs> Patty, no. <laughs> I mean, but you know, think about it. It's it's something it's, that it's classic. It's something it's, a DJ plays at the reception. It's classic. It's classic. fun. It's something that everyone can, you know, do the dance to." Everyone knows the YMCA. Okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I mean, I hadn't really. It, it didn't pop into my it's head a great first song. and foremost. Yeah, um, but it's one of those songs that's kind of like it's a, it's a joke, almost a joke song. But yeah. it's, a, it's a great tune. I'm sure it'll make its way onto the playlist for sure. No, not our playlist. Not your playlist. No, the wedding playlist. Oh yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure. No, it won't be on the cabin radio no. playlist anytime no. soon. Um, another one, and Nicole and I were actually just last week talking about it. Um, I can't remember how it came up. I think because, uh, oh, I think, um, uh, Elvis, I can't help falling in love with you. Yes. Came on. Very nice. And like, we were driving around and we were kind of just like singing it yeah. to ourselves, like slash uh, with each other. And, uh, uh oh, and, and, that's really Sweet. Well, it's just Good such a lovely Lord. song. And so I, I had to break up, you know, that moment and be like, this is the only Elvis Presley song that will be allowed on our wedding playlist. What? Really? Yeah. No, no you... other no other those songs? And Nicole yeah. is like, well, I like a little less conversation, too. There you go. I'm like, no! Cross with Junkie XL. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. We're not getting any Elvis party <laughs> tunes going <laughs> at our wedding. Love songs only. For what, through for Elvis. County Jail. And yeah, maybe Jailhouse. Yeah, yeah. maybe That's jail. a good one. <laughs> really in tune with the generation. And there was another there was another uh, classic wedding song that, well, that and Patty and John had suggested. I can't remember what it was. Can't now, help falling but, in love. Uh, you gotta play the UB forty version. I don't want to hear an Elvis version of that. UB forty. UB forty, baby. I don't even think I've heard theirs. Yeah. Is it just like red, red wine? Yeah, it's exactly like red, red can't wine. Falling it's, in love. Well there's yeah, there's two there's they have two songs. Red, yeah. red wine and can't have falling in love. Okay. I've never heard their songs. version of that. Really? No. Well I not that I can think of. That's true. I'd play it this morning. I yeah. Think. yeah. It's, uh, <sighs> so never heard it? 
I don't think so. Not wow. that I can, yeah. So what was the other song? I'm trying to think what the other one was now. And uh, I can't remember. I, all, all I could hear is YMCA now. It's just stuck in my head. I mean, you got. I think you got to have, uh, uh, what's, his, what's his tag there? And uh, one of the Righteous Brothers. What's his name? And uh, Jennifer Warrens. Jennifer Warrens? From, uh, no, that, wait. Are you just saying Jennifer Lawrence with a list? No. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Warrens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What song are you talking Damn about? Damn you. Um, the one from the uh, Righteous Dirty da- Brothers. The Dirty Dancing song. The Dirty Dancing song. Yeah. I've had the time of my life. Oh, that's the Righteous Brothers? Well, he's one of the Righteous Brothers. Oh. He sings that with her. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I think it's saw- Jennifer Warren. I just thought you were talking about Unchained Melody, of course. I was like, yeah, I'll oh, probably you play, play that, that one. Right, yeah. right on. It's a nice right slow on. dancing song. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm glad we're planning your music for your wedding. Where next, better? Next, when, whenever it is. I know, it, but I'm not going to tell anybody else. Um, yeah. Got to got to get way ahead of this sort of thing. Apparently. You know? Yeah. To curate that music. How's it been going so far? Have you guys dipped into some of these plans yet? Or? Yeah, we've we, we're, we've got uh, uh, some very, like, very preliminary plans. You know, there's there's certain things that obviously you can only, you can only really have yeah. come together as it's like, you know, uh, like six months away within yeah. that kind of time frame, but... We've got a, a pretty good idea of where we're going on, like all you know, quote unquote, moving parts, okay. so to speak. So, uh, yeah, no, it's it's coming along, and it's nice that we still have like a little under another year and a half mm-hmm. <laughs> until the mm-hmm. wedding. So, mm-hmm. so that's really nice. That I love nice. the amount of time we planned for. Yeah. Um. So on on the list of things to do, number one, get engaged. Check that one off. Got it. Number two, and then the rest. And then the rest. And then the rest. And it's all falling into place. <laughs> it all take care of itself. <laughs> and, you're, and you're doing it here, right? Yes, no. yeah, in Yellowknife. Yeah. Traveling. No, no, no. Just traveling for all the rest of my family. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, good. That's <laughs> Not good. for my Yellowknife family. That's good. And I mean, I know that, you know, people who like, like, I mean... I don't have a problem with destination weddings. Oh, that's good. I just think it's a little much. That's yeah. So, like, if you're if you're like if you're going to a friend's wedding, like if you said, "No, we're gonna get married in Winnipeg to be close to my family." Right. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to Winnipeg. <laughs> Winnipeg is not a not a destination. destination but when people wedding. are like, "We're going to Belize. Come on down for ten yeah. days." Like, no. Nah. Yeah. Nah, I'm good. I'll just say hi. I I love the concept of yeah. destination weddings. I I I could definitely see why people would have hesitations Absolutely. about them. Yeah, because you are you, you are get being, one vacation a year. Well, and you're being yeah a bit <laughs> presumptuous with your guests' dedication level. To yeah, your, that too. I mean, big you know, and, and the amount of money they have. I mean, yeah. I've been to a couple, and uh, they, yeah, they were good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. From my perspective, we're kind of doing that with Yellowknife because it's you well, know, course, yeah, it's, for the family uh, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's beautiful up here. It's come on up to Yellow Night. God, it better be. I swear to God. Oh, I'd be so angry if the weather's not good. (laughs) Well, you got that whole, I mean, you can make it the weekend thing, right? So Friday night, it's it's crap. And maybe Saturday, it's nice. Yeah. He's got the whole weekend. It's it's the It's the solstice weekend, right? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Looking forward to it. It's all coming together. (laughs) It's only another year and a half away. Send us your your classic wedding song suggestions. (laughs) And we'll forget about them because it's a year and a half away. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Burger Week uh, ended a couple of weeks ago, and it was a massive, massive success. Uh, What is it? $3,700 raised? $3,200 raised? What was it? $3,700. Yeah, $3,500. $3,500 raised. You, You ate 1,742 burgers or some damn thing. You people out there, you're wonderful. Thank you very much. What have we said uh, about using you people? <laughs> <laughs> you people are crazy. Um, no, we shouldn't say that, I guess. But uh, no, thank you for eating so many burgers. And of course, we had the, uh, the the prize drawings a couple weeks ago as well. But we also asked you to fill out some surveys for a chance to win a prize. And you did. And you filled out those surveys well. And yeah. now Ollie is going to draw one of those surveys to see... Two. What's the oh two of them? What's two. the prize? Two people are gonna win, and you each get a twenty five dollar gift card to one of eight eateries of your choice. Very nice. Ooh. So if you win, you could choose between uh, Copper House, Coyotes, Gourmet Cup, Japan, Monkey Tree Pub, Steak, Traders Grill, or Woodyard. Very nice. So there you go. Uh, if you are one of these two names drawn, now we're gonna do it. Usual cabin radio rules. I have the spreadsheet in front of me with everybody's in. Yep. Uh, you're each gonna draw a number. I'm not gonna prolong this one. We'll do no elimination rounds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the worst. It is. It is the worst. But I do enjoy it for the for the bigger stuff. For the stuff that's actually more meaningful, I enjoy destroying people's homes. Yeah, well, twenty five dollar yeah. gift card. Yeah, that's right. You know, the nice thing is that you get a choice. It's so rare that you get a choice in what you win. Well, you know, here at Cabin Radio, we believe in choice. Yeah. Cough. C R T C. Cough. 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 Okay. Okay. You ready? All right. 
Okay, Back to you so, go first. Uh, but so Mr. what do I do? Mr. Leckerman, first of all, could you please give me a number between 1 and 37? 32. 32. Uh, if your email address begins with the word Thibodeau, that is you. So I only have their email address. Oh, for goodness sake. So I will just email them and they win. So if you are if you are a Mr. or Mrs. Thibodeau and you emailed them with a survey, then yeah, you win. Great. That's okay. lovely, nice and easy. And Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> well done, Dibby. Um, let's see. 17. And, and the winner is Jesse Wheeler. I can't win. Yeah, we, uh, we've we've gone through this list and very <laughs> carefully made sure that nobody related to Cabin Radio is in the final list. Fine tooth comb. Okay, yes. 17. Number 17, Jen Crawford. Jen hey. Crawford. Congratulations, Jen. Yay. Congratulations to Jen. Congratulations to both of you. Perfect. We're going to be in touch. You're going to get a $25 gift card. Uh, thank you very much for playing. All right. Now we can post up on the, on the Mornings of the Cabin Facebook page. What would you do with a $25 gift card? <laughs> Lecter, what would you do? Oh, it's just, <laughs> just a world of options. I mean, if you oh, go to a dollar God. store, you're really going to stretch that gift card. That's true. That's right. Yeah. I can get 25 different things. <laughs> Possibly. From I mean, a no. very, very cheap store. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What do you have for a dollar here at the Woodyard? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a coaster. Get out. Maybe advice. Maybe, Maybe they advice. offer advice yeah, for yeah. a dollar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. A little I, good I, bartender I, offers that for free. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, congratulations <laughs> to our two winners. Uh, interestingly <laughs> profound ending to that little <laughs> contest. I was going to say, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice way to think about it. Uh, so thank you very much for filling out those surveys. Lord knows it's like pulling teeth sometimes trying to get people to fill out surveys or answer emails or, you know, questions. And uh, thank you to everybody who did that because it means that now we're going to go away and plan the next one. Yay. Yay. What are we going to do next? So um, we'll figure it out. I don't know. Is it going to be another burger week, or is it going to be some sort of other food? Could be some sort of other food. Oh. Ollie's pushing hard for Bannock week. No, I'm pushing hard for herring week. Oh, herring. No, very few people seem interested in my herring week. Yes, there's no herring here at all. Yeah, there is. Where? In the fridge here. Here, it would. Oh, I've got a whole whole thing of pickled herring. I mean, you can get Cisco's. You know, that's about, that's close, right? Isn't that is that close? some sort of disease? What? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it, in, it infects your thong area. <laughs> Cisco's disease. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Because of the thong song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Love that track. Oh, that's good. Maybe that'll make the wedding playlist. Oh, it better. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, I I play a, a really nice uh, acoustic version of that song. Oh, do you? So, I mean, if if you're looking, I mean, I said that I would learn a song to play acoustically. Yeah. At your wedding. Yeah. I can play that. All right. There you go. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's great. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. Ooh, that dress so scandalous. And I know nothing. <laughs> this has been Mornings at the Cabin. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. Shaking that thing. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.